We are in desperate need of a social media revolution. What am I talking about? We've become so dependent, so embedded, so ingrained, so entrenched with the big kids on the block in social media. I'm talking about Facebook, I'm talking about YouTube, I'm talking about Instagram, I'm talking about Twitter. I mean, they're so big that that even the 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 big news guys, CNN and ABC and CBS and NBC and Fox News, when they're quoting some politician or some celebrity, you know, even shows like Entertainment Tonight or whatever, whenever they want to reference someone, they will go to a viral video on YouTube. They will go to that uh, politician or celebrity's uh, Twitter page or their status update on Facebook. So they're constantly referencing these big social media giants. And the very few times that Facebook has gone down uh, worldwide because of some kind of glitch or because of some kind of something that's going on, I'm telling you, man, the, the, the world loses it. People lose it. They act like the world has come to an end if the Internet's down. If Instagram and Facebook and YouTube aren't working, they, they feel like that they have lost civilization and they're on some deserted island all alone and they're getting ready to strip naked and run around a fire talking to a volleyball with a bloody handprint on it. I mean, that's how desperate people get. It's like when the electricity goes off, they're thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They're not, they're not prepared. Sadly, we have become so dependent upon social media that when, when social media actually turns against us, uses us, abuses us, exploits us, sells us, invades our privacy, we still refuse to cut loose. We still refuse to walk away and say, I'm done. You know, you may be saying, well, aren't you the hypocrite? Because aren't you putting this very, uh, this very uh, blog, this very message on one of the big social, social media giants? Yeah, true. Because I want to get the attention. I want this message to be heard. But that doesn't mean this isn't found in other places that aren't so popular. How many times does Facebook have to betray our trust? and be caught in selling our private information, our private, uh, listening in on our most private and intimate conversations. I might as well throw, you know, Amazon and Alexa and Google Nest and Google Home and all these, these devices that we just speak into that's always listening. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. The government didn't have to induce martial law and make us some sort of martial law city-state to where that they have invaded our privacy and are monitoring us 24-7. We have actually welcomed this stuff in with these smart TVs, with facial recognition, with these webcams that you can't turn off, with these you know, smart home devices that's always listening and we can talk to, say, turn on our lights and turn down the thermostat Call so and so, read me my audiobook. Yeah, those things are great. But we don't think how vulnerable that makes us. If we are being intimate with our spouse, we would not let someone in there with a camera filming our most romantic, intimate moment with our soulmate. We wouldn't have someone sitting beside us with a tape recorder tape recording our intimate moment. But yet that is exactly what we've done when we've left our laptop open and the camera is pointed towards the bed. That's exactly what we've done when we have a smart TV in our bedroom that has facial recognition. We, that's what we do when we have these devices for our, to, to make our home a smart home that's always listening. It's already been brought out in the news that 
you know, people uh, that 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 service and monitor these smart home devices have been listening in and recording people's private conversations and sending these things to each other, laughing at us behind our back. We we have we have we have given total strangers our most detailed and personal information about us, our history. We are we are documenting and making a diary of our daily lives, where we are, what we're doing. It's not hard to find somebody. Hey, we're so-and-so. Oh, just check on Facebook, see where they checked in at. And even if they don't check in and they have a smartphone, their smartphone's probably already rigged to already automatically check them in at a place you always know where they're at. There's no need to put, put tracking devices under our skin. They're tracking us through our smartphone. They're, I, and everywhere you go, there's cameras on the corner of buildings and on highways. doesn't matter where you go. You can't escape a camera. Not only that, but everybody's carrying a camera with their smartphone. We've sold and given away the most detailed, personal, intimate information about our lives and put it out there for the entire world to consume and see and hack and steal and record. Forget about the NSA. We got Facebook, man. Forget about the government listening in. We got Facebook. We got Alexa doing that for, for the government. You can't tell me that the government don't have access to these things. You, do, you can't tell me that Mark Zuckerberg isn't in bed with a lot of companies and a lot of people. So, so what's the end game? What's all this for? Information is power. You know, you had the right kind of information, you can blackmail a lot of people. You can hold the life of somebody in your hands when you have the right information. And we've just given it away. How many times will it take for Facebook to violate our privacy and sell our pri privacy, our most private and intimate moments before we say, I'm sick of this. I'm done. I'm out of here. But we're addicted to Facebook. We can't do without Facebook. We can't live without Facebook. We can't go one day without a selfie. We can't go one day without recording every single little thing we're doing in our life, even to the most mundane things. Oh, I'm doing laundry today. Who cares? What's it going to take where we're going to cut ties and say no more? So, so what's all this information for? What are they, what are they harvesting this information? Well, we know for one thing, they're tar targeting us as consumers because these devices are listening. And if we mention, you know, something like, oh, you know, um, my water heater busted and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to get a new water heater. All of a sudden, all these home improvement stores come showing up in ads on social media and on, you know, on the internet. Because whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever you post, they're going to manipulate that and turn it into some form of advertisement. And they're going to target you with targeted ads because you've said certain code words, certain buzzwords. You've mentioned certain things. I need new shoes. I need a new purse. I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, I'd like to get tickets to the Knicks game. Or I want to go to Las Vegas for the next UFC fight. And all of a sudden, you start seeing ads geared towards these things that you mentioned and that your phone or your smart home device or your laptop was listening in on. Or they're taking, even you may not even verbalize it. You might, might have just typed it out in an instant message on Facebook or something. And they've harvested this and targeted ads. But you know. It's got to be more than just that. It's got to be more than just that. I mean, people, people often cliche now, quote Orwell's 1984, but how many people have actually read it and know what it's about? I think sometimes people just kind of nod and say, yeah, man, for real. This is like Orwell's 1984, just so they don't feel like a dummy because everybody else knows and they don't know. Well, I think there's a lot of people who don't know. I think there's a lot of people who haven't read that book. I mean, my goodness, it's almost as if Orwell was a prophet. We're living in that, we're living that book right now. 
So, so again, I mean, I've, I've, I've drug this out. I've asked this question over and over. What is the end game for this man? Why are they collecting all this information? So they can use it against you legally somehow. So they can blackmail you. So they can shame you. So they can expose you. And I know I focused on social media, but what about the almighty Google? They collect your search, your searches. They collect and track where you've been on the web. So if you are a happily married man, and let's say that you're a fine, upstanding person with a good reputation in your community, maybe you're even a minister, maybe you're a politician, maybe you're the CEO, well, all of a sudden, you've been to this porn site, you've been to that porn site, you've been to this fetish specialty site. What if we show your wife? What if we show your boss? What if we, what if we show the world? And you're automatically stripped of your power, of your reputation. Your name is mud. Or they could use it against you. We're going to expose you and show you that you're into this or that you've done this. If you don't do this for us, you know what? I mean, for as long as the internet's been around, sure, I've been to websites I shouldn't have been to. I've watched videos I shouldn't have watched. I've I've been places on on the web that I shouldn't have been, and it's all documented. It's all recorded. Now, social media. I try not to put anything too personal out there. Most of it is just messages and ministry and things like that, networking and things like that. So, you know, I try not to put anything too intimate or personal on there. But yeah, sure, maybe one day the time will come when I'm standing before a large crowd or standing before some sort of court or tribunal and they're using my internet searches and using the things that I've done and said on online against me to make me look like a fake, to make me look like a hypocrite. But you know what? I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on the redemptive power of his blood, and I'm standing on repentance and forgiveness because we've all sinned. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the word says. There is none righteous, no, not one. Just because you're a believer and you're bought by the blood and you're saved and you pro profess to be a believer doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean you're never going to sin again. You're going to sin and you're probably going to sin in very heinous ways in ways that you would be totally humiliated or embarrassed if everybody found out. And if you were exposed to that degree and that capacity, would you still be able to hold up your hand and say, you know what, doesn't matter what you say about me, doesn't matter what you put out there against me, doesn't matter how bad you make me look, I know who I am, I know that I'm saved, I know that I'm blood-bought, I know that I have repented and renounced my sins, I know I've been forgiven. So I don't care what you put out there. I don't care what you attempt or try to use against me. I don't care what I lose. I'm never renouncing my faith. I'm never renouncing my beliefs. I'm never going to compromise on my morals, beliefs, and standards and convictions. And there's nothing you can do or say to make me do that, even upon the pains of death or the pain of death of my loved one. Whoa. Are you, are you sure you want to go that far? Hey, there's brothers and sisters all over the world, in China, North Korea, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, India, who have, who have seen their wives raped in front of them and murdered, their children slaughtered in front of them, just to get them to renounce their faith and their belief in the one true God of Israel, in the scriptures, and in Messiah Yeshua, and they won't. What's the worst they can do? I'll kill you? You get promoted. You go to heaven. Is that the worst they can do? Don't they realize what martyrdoms do? Believers don't die. They multiply. Because people will see the glorious way this person died for their faith and for their beliefs and for the love of the one true God. And it will make them say, would I die for my religion? Would I die for my worldview, my philosophy? Am I willing to die for that? They died with a smile on their face. They died singing a song. They died saying they loved me. That's un that that's not natural. That's supernatural. Man, what they what they had must be the real deal. I want that. 
Because my faith, my worldview, my philosophy doesn't answer the inescapable questions of life. I'm telling you, this information they're collecting on us is going to be used against us to try to get us to renounce our faith, to try to get us to fall in line with the things of this world and the world system so that we no longer become a threat politically or religiously. They're going to try to blackmail us. They're going to try to ruin our marriages, our families, our friendships, our faith, our community, our careers, everything. But are you willing to pay the price and give it all for God, for his word, for his Messiah? Not back down. Are you willing to have the faith of the three Hebrew children that was, that was thrown in the fire? They said, oh, king, we know our God is able to save us from this fiery furnace. But even if he doesn't, we will still not bow down to your idol. They were looking to die. They weren't looking to be saved or rescued. They were looking to be martyred. But because of their faith, there were four men in the fire, not three. The Son of God saved them. They made it against the law to pray to anybody but the king. The earthly, human, frail, fallen, secular king. Daniel said, so what? Does it matter? God's law trumps man's law. I'm going to pray like I always. I'm not going to hide in a corner or in a dark closet and pray. I'm going to open my windows like I do every single day. And I'm going to pray towards Jerusalem. Aha! We've caught you. To the lion's den you go. He knew. He knew what the price was. He was still willing to pay it. Because he wasn't going to back down. Ministers, preachers, evangelists, ministers, apostles, prophets. Are you willing to preach and stand on the word of God? Even if they come into your home and into your church to put handcuffs on you and take you away for what they deem as hate speech because you're preaching the un uncompromising, unadulterated word of God? Are you willing to do that? I refuse to be censored. I refuse to compromise my standards of the word of God no matter what anybody says or, 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 or comes up with against me. No matter how much they try to ruin my reputation, I know who I am. I know who I am in, in Messiah Yeshua. I know who I am in his word. I know who I am in God. And I know that my true friends and my true families know the truth and know who I am and will have my back and will not turn against me and leave me high and dry and, stand, and stranded just because all of whatever information they've collected come out. You know, if they brought something that looks really bad, I'd say, yeah, if your records say that I went to that site, I went to that site. Was it right? Should I have gone there? Should I have watched that? No. Was I wrong? Yes. Did I commit sin? Yes. But there is repentance and there is forgiveness. And that is remembered by God no more because it's under the blood. And I've recognized, renounced, and rebuked that sin, been delivered from that addiction, from that demon. And I'm walking saved, delivered, healed, sanctified, and blood-bought. And you cannot pluck me out of the hand of God. It's time for a social media revolution. Everybody thought MySpace would be around forever. Where are they now? Facebook's king. But that doesn't mean that the free speech Facebook alternative platform of MeWe can't become the next Facebook. It doesn't mean that the free speech platform of Gab Social can replace Twitter. It doesn't mean that that Brighteon or BitChute can't replace YouTube because they're free speech platforms where your data is not collected, where you're not going to be censored. I mean, it, it, you know, it's up to the individual. And, and Google, you know, Google is, 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 a, is, a, is a buzzword, is a phrase. I Googled this. I found this online because I Googled it. What's not to say that one day people are saying, man, I ducked it. You're saying ducked it? Yeah, there's a search engine that will not bury what you're actually trying to find under results they want you to see. It's called DuckDuckGo. And you know, case in point, my, uh, my buddy, my friend, Tom Dunn of Through the Black, my buddy, my friend, Tom Dunn of Through the Black Ministries, Angry Sun Media, 
he made an awesome documentary called Fire and Brimstone. But you go to Google and type in Fire and Brimstone documentary, you won't find it. You go to DuckDuckGo, boom, it's in like the top five. Why is Google burying it? Because it's going against, it's going against the world because it's about the LBGTQ agenda. Awesome documentary. Find it, get it, buy it, need it, share it. But you know what? It wouldn't show up on Google, but it showed up on DuckDuckGo. Who's not to say that if we start switching to these free speech, uh, free information, social media platforms, that if there's enough people that we can have a social media revolution, oh yeah, it may be pie in the sky, but it can happen. You know, if, if MySpace can be dethroned, Facebook can be dethroned, and why are we such idiots to stay on there and sharing our private stuff when they've been brought out and called out on the carpet, even by the government over and over and over for violating our privacy and selling our information when they said they don't and they won't and we can't? Well, they did. So what are you going to do about it, people? So I have created these social media platforms and I'm getting ready for the transition when these other free speech social media platforms become on the rise and become a thing. And when these other oppressive, censoring, far progressive left propagandist social media mucky mucks are exposed for what they really are and how they're exploiting us and selling our information. Hey, we need a social media revolution. And it's got, it takes every single individual. If everybody wakes up and starts making the switch to these free speech, and I'm not trying to promote these others just because I named them. I just named them because I know they're free speech social media platforms, but they're probably others. If we don't make a switch and we don't start taking the power away from these big dogs on the block that are censoring the Judeo-Christian worldview, and that are deleting and demonetizing Judeo-Christian ministries and people on these platforms. They're locking them out of their accounts. They're not allowing them to upload or to tweet or to post. What are we going to do, folks? What are we going to do about that? Are we just going to bow and just roll over and show our belly? Have our tail tucked between our legs? Or are we going to put our foot down and say, forget you, man. I'm not going to take this. I'm going over here to this free speech platform. <laughs> You've lost my business later, losers. It's time for the body of Messiah to wake up and to realize that we are in a war. And it's our very lives that are at stake here. Oh, you're being overdramatic. Really? Really tell that to the Chinese believers. Tell that to the North Korean believers. Tell that to the Saudi Arabian believers. Tell that to believers around, because you know what? They, all, they once lived in freedom, and then it was slowly taken away, and then they were shut up and censored and silenced, and now they're hunted and killed like animals, all because they're believers in Messiah Yeshua and believe in the one true God of Israel and stand on the truth of the words of the Bible. It's time to put up or shut up, folks. It's time to let your voice be heard. It's time to draw a line in the sand and hold that line. Hey, guys, think about it. Seriously think and pray about it. Love you guys. God bless. And shalom. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that'll let you know every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at Abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks. Shalom. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.